students from low-income households face additional challenges in schools. And that's where Arius Academy comes in. But then if these two decisions is false, then I will stay at home and sleep. Okay? So are you clear? This Malaysian after-school program functions as an education intervention for struggling students. They do this by using creative lesson plans as a tool to get students interested in learning. Everyone in this room here is on a secret mission. Students at Arius do everything from learning binary code to building robots. That's because the teachers who founded Arius believe in the importance of project-based learning. They created a curriculum based off Maker, TED-Ed, and STEM philosophies. And remember, by the end of this first semester, you will also make your own direction. Okay? So starting from today, I want you to start thinking what will you build for us as a team. I like the fact that students in Arus get to do really cool things and also they get to learn by making things. Instead of a teacher just telling them how things work, they actually get very hands-on with their work. The idea is that students will be able to use knowledge in a meaningful way. They are trained to be independent learners and are encouraged to experiment and invent. The Iris Academy program runs for three days a week. Students are pre-selected based on their family income and the school they go to. For Iris as teachers, the after-school program is about more than providing an education. I would say it is on the dedication we put in building their characters. So it's not just uh, showing them the knowledge and showing how things get put around, but also we want them to be able to speak out, to be able to be a better person and develop a better character. So this one is the first division and the second division. Understand? Now how do you get children interested in the environment? If you're EcoFun Go ASEAN, you try using a life-size board game and a giant dice. This project combines a game called EcoFunopoly with environmental education events in Indonesia, the Philippines, and Myanmar. The idea is that by teaching kids about environmental issues, they will adopt green habits in the future. The mission of this game is we want to make the player memorize their daily activities, especially for small things, so then they can uh, change their behavior in the future. I find it very interesting and also challenging because we are not only playing with the children, but we also have to ensure that we spread our mission to take care of our environment. Over 4,000 board games were produced in the last century. However, only 10% had an environmental education theme, and none of those were made in Southeast Asia. Until Anissa created her game, she made two versions, one that focuses on carbon footprint and one that focuses on waste management. So, who's the winner of Ecopolopoly? So, the winner is the player who has no carbon at all. It means they have finished all of the carbon, put it in the tree. The carbon is like a pieces. It's uh, like a money in Monopoly, but we use carbon, not money. Ecophonopoly practices what it preaches. The game is made of recycled materials by unemployed housewives in Indonesia. It's already gained traction as a learning tool in Indonesia, as well as a group of dedicated volunteers who help put on events. It's so exciting for me to join this community because I love to play with the and I also love to play with the kids. 